to my mentor, the first CLA Dean, Ambassador Wilfredo Villaporta, to my fellow administrators in the college, distinguished chairs, faculty members, staff, students, fellow Lasallians, pleasant good afternoon to all. I am deeply honored and humbled to be given this rare privilege to serve the College of Liberal Arts as your dean. I stand on the shoulders of those who came before me. Let me acknowledge their contribution in building our college into what it is today. To Wilfrido Villaporta, Lourdes Bautista, Robert Salazar, Mr. Rita Grunberg, Jesus Marco, Antonio Contreras, Exaltacion Lamberte, and Dominador Bongongan Jr. I am proud to have served each and every one of the former deans. As mentioned by Ambassador Villaporta, I began working for the CLA as a student assistant under a student financial assistance scholarship during the deanship of Dr. Villaporta in the mid-1980s. I was hired as a part-time lecturer and later full-time assistant professor by Dr. Bautista. I first served as chair of the political science department under the deanship of Dr. The dean back. <laughs> awesome. I'm now following the footsteps of my mentor too closely, uh, Dr. Salazar, and later was upgraded as chair of the International Studies Department under the deanship of Dr. Lambert. Please allow me to share a few more things about myself so that you will understand where I'm coming from. Although I have also studied in the other two universities that I shall not name at this time, I have been a Lasallian for most part of my adult life, both as a student and as an academic. I will be the first Lasallian and product of the CLA to assume the deanship of this college. But it was a long, hard trek to get here. I know, for I have experienced the travails of a part-time faculty when I was younger. The pressure of finishing one's graduate degrees, the meager part-time salary rate that seemed not enough for all the work expected in the department. Diba rin? <laughs> the lingering doubt of whether to pursue a career in the academia or not. But thanks to my senior colleagues who supported me, mentored me, and opened doors for me, I rose from being a part-time lecturer to chair of both the political science and International Studies Department, and now Dean of the College of Liberal Arts. Ambassador Wilfredo Villaporta, my sensei, has opened the world to me. He taught me the art of international networking, the value of protocol, and the importance of academic diplomacy, emphasis on diplomacy. Ambassador Villaporta, Aside from him, I would like to give a special shout out also to two of my other mentors and sometimes tormentors, <laughs> Professor Ronald Holmes, who unfortunately cannot join us uh, this afternoon because he's also preparing to finally complete his PhD at the uh, Australian National University, and my other mentor, a great friend, great colleague, Dr. Francisco Magno. Dr. Magno, please stand up. Since I have benefited from the support of my senior colleagues, I have always endeavored when I served as department chair to help support and mentor the promising young and dynamic among the junior faculty. I see some of them here this afternoon, and you know who you are, please stand up. From International <laughs> Studies and Political Science, AJ, A, Francis, thank you, Ashur, Robin, Ashur CLA Dean, I will not only continue to support the junior faculty members of my former 
departments, but I will do the same for all 10 departments and three research centers. I will also support the senior faculty members who continue to render service and continue to give glory to the college and the university. Our senior faculty should be the exemplar for our junior faculty. This is the Lasalle way. The College of Liberal Arts is composed of my professors, my batchmates, and classmates. Special shout out to my ate, Dina Roma. <laughs> Lenny Garcia was not here from the philosophy, and Lorene Velasco is now in Japan. Kayo na lang ba natitira sa batchmates ko? Okay. Um, the college is also composed of my colleagues and my students. I am one with you, and hopefully, you are one with me. I am ready to serve you. Parang Schumer. <laughs> the college is facing great challenges in the coming years. I'm happy to serve. I am ready to lead you. Believe it or not, the College of Liberal Arts is one of the youngest colleges in the university. In 1983, the former College of Arts and Sciences was split into two. Thus, the College of Liberal Arts was born while the CLA is relatively a young college of De La Salle University. Its roots lie in classical knowledge and education. The challenge is to bring CLA into the 21st century. And for the CLA to be truly an agent of transformative learning, CLA must learn to transform itself. To do so, CLA should not build structures like factories, but build structures like clouds. Clouds, not only in the metaphorical sense, but also in the technical sense. In the age of cloud computing, where interoperability is king, we should also learn to transcend the artificial boundaries that divide the humanities and social sciences. Unlike the other colleges in the university, CLA is composed of a special set of intellectuals, a special genus of people. We are both meaning makers and social explainers. Liberal arts education provides the heart and soul of the university. We should be front and center in facing the brave new world ahead of us. Two major challenges or strategic imperatives face us in the coming years. First is the K-12 transition. Just like climate change, K-12 is upon us, and we can only mitigate the initial, albeit adverse, repercussion on our student enrollment beginning academic year 2015 to 2016. Since last year, we have planned for this eventuality, and we have explored several means to address the lean years. We have projected the numbers of classes, the faculty, we have front-loaded the enrollment of students. We intend to conduct teacher training programs for those who will handle the new general education curriculum. But we should continue to plan and use the lean years as an opportunity to retool and reposition ourselves. Hopefully, the new GE curriculum will allow us to promote interdisciplinary and multidisciplinary approaches to tertiary education. The second strategic imperative is the dawning of the ASEAN Economic Community beginning 2015-2016. Although the process is protracted and may take several more years to realize the common market, it will be a reality for the region sooner rather than later. Priority three of the ASEAN five-year five -year work plan on education emphasizes cross-border mobility and internationalization of education. We will not only face the natural movement of persons across borders, but both physical and virtual connectivity. Imagine if you may, Dr. Dina Roma reciting poetry to Singaporean students online, or Dr. Alfredo Robles over there lecturing in Ho Chi Minh discussing the Euro crisis to Vietnamese students in French. Or Dr. J.J. Joaquin, philosophizing under the temp Swedagon Temple in the heart of Yangon, Myanmar. I picture DLSU as truly an international campus, 
with Malaysians, Indonesians, Thai, even Bruneans walking the halls of Yuchenko, Henry C., and Brother Andy. Indeed, the possibilities are endless. There are 65,000 higher education institutions spread across 10 ASEAN countries with 10 million students. Imagine if DLSU can just capture even a percentage of that market. The Philippines is on the verge of economic takeoff. From falling behind, we are catching up with the rest of the economic growth countries. We joined Turkey, Indonesia, and Mexico in a new acronym, TIMS. These are the conditions that contribute to our blue ocean strategy. It is no longer enough that we compete in the red ocean, bloodied by the narrow parochial domestic competition. We should go beyond our borders. Outside the UAAP, our competitors are no longer Ateneo or UP. Our benchmark should be the National University of Singapore. Allow me to share my personal vision for the college. CLA shall be the flagship of the TAF campus by 2016. And CLA shall be the regional hub for the study and research in the humanities and social sciences by 2020. In order for us to realize this vision, we should be more like starfish than spiders. Compared to spiders, who are centralized web spinners, starfish are autonomous, decentralized, network makers. This is the essence of our professional learning communities. Let us harness the potential of the PLCs in order to pro propel our college forward into the 21st century. Let us continue to excel in teaching and research. Let us continue to upgrade our curriculum so that we can be true in our Lasallian mission to educate the youth and serve our nation, most especially the poor. Thank you very much for your kind attention. Animo Lasar.